Okay, the recording is on. Welcome to BC314, our course on media and technology in ministry. Let's take a moment to pray and then we will get started. Could somebody please pray with the class? Anyone? Can I Please go ahead, Asha. Dear God, thank you so much for this day, Lord, as we're about to learn media and technology, God. Lord, you made everything for our own good and purpose, God, that we get to reach out many to many ways, God. Lord, as we're about to start, that you fill us with your wisdom and knowledge. And I also pray for all my classmates who are not feeling well or Lord, I pray for your healing and your blood to cover them, God. By the strike, they're healed. For you love them so much, God. And Lord, thank you so much for everything. As we're about to learn, that you fill us. And also, I pray for Pastor Ashish, God, that you fill him, empower him with your strength and your uh, healing towards him, God. Thank you, Lord, for everything. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. All right. So. We, uh, the last couple of lectures, we've been talking about digital engagement. Um, we we're talking about different ways uh, we could engage people, engage with people, whether it's the congregation or the community beyond our congregation, uh, how we could engage with them, different tools, you could say, that we could use to engage with them. Uh, we covered that. Uh, towards the end, uh, we mentioned about the. Uh, we spent a bit of time on our church website and how we could uh, use that as a as a platform or a medium for communication. Um, and I just mentioned in passing about the church app. Um, I haven't spent too much. I didn't spend too much time. Uh, but if those of you are interested, you could download our APC Church app. If you just have to go to um, you have to search for All People's Church Bangalore uh, in, in, in the uh, app or Play Store, and you can download our church app and just have a look at it. So the app, nowadays, many churches have also, also have their own church app, and people are comfortable using uh, an app on their phone or the digital device. So that is also a good way to engage with people. Uh, I haven't spent too much time on it. Uh, I just point you to uh, the APC Church app or any church app that you want to look at. Uh, again, the rationale behind our APC Church app is to make it more like a, 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 a place where people can come to for good content as opposed to a place where we put a lot of announcements and notifications. So using the app to announce and engage people with with announcements and notifications is not our priority. Our priority is to provide a place for content so they can come back to content. So that's that's the way, that's been our rationale behind the way we've designed it and positioned it. Um, just to let, let us know uh, what's coming up. Today, uh, I, I want to, you know, I, I know towards the end of last class, we kind of were getting into a church management system, but we will keep that for a later time. Uh, today, I would like to cover, uh, talk about some guidelines for uh, graphics and video. Uh, just go through and share some of the things, you know, uh, along on guidelines for that. And then uh, chapters 13, 14, it would look like this. We will, um, in chapter 13, so today we'll do lesson number 12, which is guidelines for graphics and video. Some just some practical things to keep in mind. Then lesson 13, we'll get into social media. Again, just some guidance there on how to use social media meaningfully. Chapter 14, I will spend some time on digital equipment. Just give us an idea of, you know, okay, here, these are the equipments you need to be aware of uh, as far as production is concerned. So uh, whether it's photography, audio, video equipment, that's basically what we'll touch on, live stream equipment. 
so these are equipments that generally you need to be aware of because uh, people come to you and say, hey, you know, Pastor, can we buy this camera? Can we buy this thing for video production, for live streaming, for audio, and so on? So it's more from that perspective. Just to give you an exposure that, okay, these are the things that you need for doing certain things, typically that are done by churches and ministries. Then in chapter 15, or lesson number 50, we'll come to software platforms. That's where we'll come back to our church management system and a couple of other platforms that would be useful for a church or a Christian ministry. i just walk you through some other things that we're using. Uh, and uh, then we'll close off lesson number 16. We're talking about data protection, confidentiality, and privacy. So that's what we have left for us uh, in this course. Um, and now, this is a non-technical course. That means uh, I mean, I'm not going to assess you on technical things. So at the end of the course, we'll have one final assessment or exam. It's going to be a non-technical exam, right? So it's not, um, we're not checking your technical knowledge. It's just more for your understanding of, OK, this is what's out there. Um, this, these are, this is the best way to make use of these things, right? Because I know uh, many of us would come from non-technical backgrounds. and. Uh, you don't need to necessarily know the technology. You leave that for people in your IT team or media team. Let them handle that. But as a person who's responsible for the ministry, you need to provide direction. You need to give answers, some guidance. So it's good to be aware of these things so that uh, when you are when you are involved in meetings and discussions, you know you 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 can use this knowledge to help guide the decisions that are being made. Okay, so that's that's from that's the point from which you will be assessed, not from a technical standpoint. All right, so today let's get into some guidelines on uh, uh, graphics and uh, one minute. Share my screen. Share. Yeah. All right. So guidelines for graphics and videos. Uh, I would point us to two very good uh, resource websites uh, in connection with graphics and videos and basically using technology in and media in ministry. One is put out by the Church of England. They have a, a, a place where they call it Church of England Digital Labs. It's quite interesting. They've put out quite a lot of good information there. So you could go there. And there's another website called churchleaders.com, and they have a section for media and technology. So that's also a very useful place to go. And and it, it's, it seems both these are keeping things current. So it's a good place to see, okay, what's happening and a lot of that, especially the second one, churchleaders.com. So I'd encourage you to go visit that if you are interested in getting more information on, you know, media and technology ministry and, how it's being used these days. That's a good place to go. Now, what I want to uh, the, uh, share with us in this particular lesson is that you know when when you as a leader or or whoever is leading the ministry, overseeing uh, the media technology side of things. Um, it's important for you to guide those teams, the media team and the IT team, what they're doing. And at least in 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 in, in my own experience, uh, I've noticed that the, the the media people, the IT people, they they are good in their knowledge and skill, and you know they know what they're doing, etc. But they may not always think from a church or a ministry perspective. They may not always think like that. They're thinking more in a technical perspective or, okay, I need to get this thing done and use, you know, uh, they may not be looking at it now from a big picture perspective. And so every now and then things can go out of hand. You know, just, they may not know what the priorities are or what, sh you know, how to communicate. Uh, through their through what they're doing so that is where as a pastor or as a leader of the christian ministry you need to be giving that guidance to them and it actually gets down into the nitty gritties the details because if something goes wrong in the detail 
who's going to be held responsible? The pastor. You know, for example, I'll just give some sim simple examples. You know, sometime back uh, in our one of our graphics team, they I, I don't know what the actual thing was, but they they used a graphic uh, of a person and of a hand. You know, in in that picture, in the graphic, there was a hand, and there was a tattoo on that hand. I think a, a tattoo of a cross or something. Now, our graphics team, the person who whoever did this graphic, wasn't paying attention to that. They were thinking of, you know, creating this graphic for whatever they were doing. They overlooked that the fact that there was a hand, picture of a hand, and that hand had a cross tattoo on it. Anyway, so they created the graphic, they put it out, you know, on our social media, whatever, whatever they're promoting, they're promoting something. And I get a message. I mean, they've just released it. Immediately, I'm getting a message from somebody in the congregation. Hey, does this mean you are advocating tattoos? I'm like, OK. <laughs> you know, I wasn't even involved in the process of doing the graphics. But you know, the graphics team is doing, they're promoting some event. But who's being held responsible? Me. I'm getting a message. What's going on? You know, then I realized, okay, okay, so the problem is there's a tattoo on this particular person's hand. So somebody in the congregation is reading it as we are saying okay to tattoos. Now, the question about tattoos is a separate question, but what I'm saying is a graphic that was created by the media team put out for some promotion is having this kind of a message, sending this kind of a message to a person in the congregation, whoever saw it, and they're holding me responsible for it. So I immediately had to go back, you know, communicate after, hey, take down that graphic, just do a touch up, you know, just remove the the uh, the tattoo on the keep the same graphic, just remove the tattoo, put it back. You know, so quickly we had to do that change. But it was such a small example, but it is it's affecting somebody, right? Or some other scenarios where you know we had a sermon, uh, we did a sermon on giving uh, I think it was about prayer, and one of the one of the sermons in the series was about travailing in prayer, laboring in prayer, and so the graphic was showing had a picture of a pregnant woman. This woman was uh, had her hand on her, you know, her belly, but she was wearing a ring, a co certain colored ring, on a certain finger. It was not the ring finger; it was a different finger. Now, the person using the graphic is not thinking about it. They're thinking, okay, I'm communicating, travailing in prayer or laboring in prayer. And so they're using the picture. But that particular ring on that particular finger, that colored ring, is communicating a different message. You know, I forget the color and all of that. I forget the details now. But it's talking about, I don't know, it was, you know, you can look it up online, but the, the rings worn on different fingers are having a different, sending a different message to a different audience. So I uh, immediately had to collect, you know, get back to the graphic team. Hey guys, please just, you know, touch up, remove the ring. You don't want to, you don't want to be communicate, you don't want to be communicating that kind of a message to our audience. I know what you're trying to say. Uh, we, you know, our, our, the mess sermon is, Travailing in prayer, you're using the picture of a, you know, want to communicate the picture of somebody in labor, etc. But there is some detail which communicates a different message. So you need to touch up the graphic. And so they had to redo it and touch it up, you know. So some small things like this can, uh, if we are not careful in the graphics that's being created, you know, it can, it can uh, cause, it can get different kinds of reactions from people and so on, okay? So that's why there has to be these guidelines. And I may have covered some of this in our earlier course last semester on when you talked about church administration. So in case there is some repetition, please forgive me. But, um, you know, when we talk about media, so uh, media and video. So let's go over some of these guidelines. So, uh, it would be good if you, as a pastor, as a leader, you're 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 staying current with what's happening with 
in media design globally and these websites here and of course there are many others that will help you stay uh, stay current with media treatments um, you know so I constantly keep giving feedback to our media team video teams hey look at these new things that are happening here's some you know better ways to do things and so on so that input if it's coming from you it's very useful because sometimes like we said the media team or graphics team uh, graphics media we the video team, IT team, they're very focused on their work. They may not be aware of these uh, new ways of doing things. Uh, understand that you are actually communicating right, uh, through your video and graphics. It's not like I'm just putting out a video, I'm putting out a video. You know, the, every, de every detail is actually communicating something to your audience. So you have to look for the details. Uh, be clear. Or what your message is, what you want to convey, who you're speaking to, some other other simple things. You know, the fonts should be very uh, easily readable. So that's something they may overlook. They may want to use some very fancy font, but then it's of no practical value because once the graphic goes out, people are finding it so difficult to read what's written on the graphic. Then the whole purpose of that graphic or that video is lost. Okay, so you need to say, hey, fonts, keep it simple. People should be able to read, you know. Uh, uh, don't get too fancy where they can't read what you, what's on the graphic. Uh, color choices, you know, keep it simple, relevant, be sensitive. Uh, sometimes even colors are communicating meaning, you know. Um, and so uh, you've got to be very careful. What colors are you using? What's the meaning that's being communicated? And uh, the, while the colors are to be visually appealing, avoid clash. Blank space, don't overcrowd your image or your video. And uh, uh, the way things are arranged on the graphic, you know, what is being emphasized is also very important. You know, so how the fonts, font sizes, what is placed where, all of these is, you know, very important. And uh, visually, your know, the human eye is going to land on the largest or the heaviest element in the graphic or video. So what is it that you want to impact first? That should be highlighted. Sometimes, you know, the person doing the graphic doesn't know what is the thing that you want to communicate. So as a pastor, you're thinking, okay, this is the most important thing that should come out, should stand out in the graphic, uh, but that may not be what they understand, right? So that needs to be, hey, this is what should stand out first. You know, so these 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 all details that uh, uh, that you know, if you establish some guidelines, then you don't have to keep checking all the time. They are following the guidelines, and they know what should be emphasized in the graphic or the video, because that's you know, people are giving you maybe a few seconds in the graphic. So it whatever hits the eye first is what they're going to go a bit, go away a bit. So you need to uh, get that across. Okay, just for those who might be interested, you know, uh, there are these software design packages, graphic design packages that are available. And, um, you know, you can get discounts if you are a registered charity. Uh, we have been receiving uh, that benefit for many years now. Uh, there are also free applications that you could use for graphics work in case you're interested. So you need to establish some guidelines for your team. And I'm just sharing some thoughts here that you could put down. You could you know, copy paste this and use it for your team if you wish, um, or you can write, write up your own guidelines, right? So uh, constantly encourage your team to stay relevant uh, in the style of the way they're creating graphics. You know, keep it relevant. So, if you're if you're in a very, if you're ministering to a very young audience, you know they are the, your audience is very aware of you know the changing designs and trends. So, your team that's doing the church graphics must also stay relevant. Be very careful about the images. So, tell the team, hey, no suggestive images, no questionable. Don't use images where there's inappropriate clothing or any kind of provocative images you know be very very careful uh, you know from time to time you hear even some large christian organizations you know it's like for example like christianity today and others uh, they've gone into trouble because they put out an image in their website which some you know somebody raised an alarm say hey 
you can't do that it's communicating a wrong message you know so even large Christian organizations have got into trouble uh, when they were not careful in the images of that they were using, so you've got to be very careful. Font style and size, like I said, you know, it should be very clear, legible. That's that's the key. Um, uniformity, right? Uh, there's got to be a, a sense of uniformity across your work, the graphics, the videos. It, it all must, you know. And this is these are typical branding concepts where there's a sense of identity there's a sense of uniformity in communication across platforms whether it's across uh, you know the various ways you're communicating with the graphics or the video it's showing it's communicating that hey this is the same organization that's putting things out and so that's very important it shouldn't look very separate different right um, and then use relevant picture pictures and faces you know so example if there is an announcement that's very specific to your crowd use pictures of that your crowd would relate to right um uh, don't use pictures that are unrelated now if you can you can use pictures of people from your own congregation as well so think of that should be you know thought through if you, or if you're doing something for a global audience yeah then you can have a global you know all kinds of people faces and all that that is fine you're speaking to a global audience so keep the, keep the casts mindful about video creation just no, just a little bit here um, in your video again same thought be careful in what you include in your video um, and it, it keep it clean keep it relevant uh, you know let it be something that clearly represents biblical values integrity uh, so on don't use anything that's questionable. Um, and if if anybody's in doubt, you know, we tell them, hey, just check with me. If you're not sure whether you should use a video, particular video or thing. Now, I, you know, uh, for example, I tell you this this happened a long, long time ago. Now uh, we had a book. We have a book called Foundations. Right. So our graphics person said, okay, what what image would you like? I just said, you know, okay, something that is showing construction, you know, maybe you know, bricks being laid, stones being laid, and so on. Okay, that's what I just communicated that. Okay, so the the graphics person went off to work, and then uh, he did his this graphic design. He sent it off to the the publications team. The publications team sent it off to the printers. Book was printed. Now I didn't check at that time, right? And finally, I get the printed book. And on the in the printed book, I am seeing something. I'm seeing pebbles, you know, a big pebble, a smaller pebble, a smaller pebble, a thing. And that was used on the book cover. Now, what did I communicate to the team? I said, you know, use something that is showing construction, you know, building. So this graphic person found this, he used it. But that is actually communicating some. Eastern religion, you know, those pebbles stacked on top of each other is some Eastern mystic mysticism, something that's what that's actually what that picture is communicating. I was like, oh, and the books have already been printed, you know. So I communicated something, I said, use stone like construction work in the mind of our graphics person. He said, hey, stones are being on top of each other. He was not thinking about what is this visual image? Where is it from? What is it actually communicating? And then the book was printed. Somebody saw the book cover and they pointed to me. And I saw, oh, and that's on, you know. So then we had, but the books were already printed, like 2,000 copies or whatever, already printed, you know. So we just had to make use of it. And then I had to tell them, hey, please change the graphic. When I say, Construction. I meant brick. I didn't mean pebbles. Uh, I didn't mean that. I I meant you know building a wall. So we had to kind of get a little bit more detailed in instructions. Yeah. You know? So I'm just giving an example that where uh, the graphic people they're doing their work. They're doing the best, but they may not necessarily be looking at the details, the spiritual meaning of what is being communicated. And uh, these mistakes have happened. Uh, and you know it's a little embarrassing at times. So 
we have to be careful, right? Um, when when you're using people from the church, you know, if you're using footage of events and so on, always communicate them in a good light. Don't show things that that leaves people embarrassed. And so that's being sensitive uh, in in the kind of footage, video footage that you're using. Um, be careful, you know, when you when you're showing children. Uh, don't show video segments that of them doing dangerous things. Uh, then you know it sends a wrong message, and parents will get concerned. You know these are minute details, but all these make a difference because this video would be played in the church or for church audience. Right? Um, we had to think about the duration of the videos. You know, uh, today the time, the the duration of the videos are getting shorter and shorter you know so even then uh, you know YouTube uh, Instagram uh, other platforms so they've shot very short videos and people are just being trained to look at very short videos so basically in few seconds you've got to communicate what you want to say so uh, that's important and then make subtitles available so that if you have an audience that's not very conversant with uh, the language, example with English, then subtitles can help them. Uh, and of course, in, in an example in YouTube, you can automatically generate transcripts and so on. So you can provide that as well. In the voices on your videos, you know, uh, choose exciting voices. Um, uh, you know the tone of the voice all of that is very important uh, you, you need the video team to be aware of it aware of a possible short text with the voice or voice with text if you want to reiterate the message uh, if that's that's you know depending on the situation that may be relevant again the fonts that are used uh, there must be consistency in the graphics the videos so on okay um, so some more detail you know uh for have standard standards that are being used across graphics and videos in, in the way for example how you mention your date how you mention your time when you what acronyms you use um, these are things that are important because if it is consistent then with just a glance people will catch it right so if you are, for example, the day of the week, if you're saying Monday, you're using the three letter, three, the short form, then use that consistently everywhere. Don't put M O N some places, M O N D O N Monday in other places. You know, there's got to be consistency across your graphics and your video and how you do things, the way you express the, the time. If you're using a 12 hour clock or a 24 hour clock, use that consistently. So you could say 2 p.m. Yeah, okay, people understand that. Or you consistently say 14 hours. So that's also 2 p.m. But how are you going to say it? You know, use it consistently and use it with what, what would be easy. So when you say 2 p.m., no conversion is needed in the mind. If you say 14 hours, then in their mind, they need to convert 14 hours to 2 p.m., right? So that's one more step away. So it's always better to say something like this that's explicit rather than something that you're making them do of a and also the sequence of the information day month year date and day yeah so the sequence in which you give is important you know okay and the, the timing the venue the fee the link all that so if, if it's very standardized across all your graphic across all your videos people get accustomed to it okay this is what it is this is where I can look for that information so uh, it's useful to have some standardized way of doing things uh, when you're giving URLs, use something that's easy to remember. So, if, for example, we would say apcw.org slash men's conference, you know, or kids' conference, or, you know, weekend school. Something that's easy to remember, short, that they can just type, and it'll take them to that particular page where they need to go. If you're using a rented venue, uh, rented space, then it's always good to say venue. That means it's not your place, but it's something that you're renting out. So then there's no confusion, right? So you can say, okay, APC Central, example, APC Central, the venue is this. So APC Central is what you're, you know, as part of your organization, 
your central church, but it's meeting at this venue. The venue is not yours. You're just using that as a venue to meet. So they, it's very clear. Right? Once again, same thing when you're doing videos, be careful of the faces of the people that you use. Use it, that's, use what's relatable to your audience. Uh, if you're using, if you're targeting a global audience, you can use global faces. Uh, if you are using people who come to your church, uh, that that would be you know even more attractive, and uh, be careful in your selecting the people whom you're using in the videos and so on. If you're using videos of children, take consent from the parents because parents may or may not want to you know have their children's faces appear in promotional material. So got to be careful about that, right? Um, just a few more thoughts here. Um, for graphics, videos, fonts, and music, there are a lot of places where you can source them. Uh, many of them are free. Some of them are paid, subscription-based. But I've just given you a list of things that we use, uh, where we get our uh, footage, video footage, graphics, fonts, music. You can go and make use of it as well. Many of them are free. Uh, some of them may be paid. The other thing to keep in mind, uh, let me pause here. Are you all with me? Uh, any questions so far? You are following? OK. All right. So I'm just sharing um, information that you could use when you're doing your work. OK. So when you are creating content, you also need to keep a search engine optimization in mind. So even the graphics and the videos that we create uh, should be optimized for search engines. Otherwise, that resource is, is I'm not saying it's a waste, but it's important. This play in search engine is being lost, right? So it's good to tell the team, hey, guys, you're doing your graphics, you're doing your videos, that's good. But when we are releasing it, when you're publishing it, keep in mind that these should add to our search engine optimization. It should serve its purpose, right? So uh, the title that's being used on the videos, of course, it should accurately represent the content, but it should also be uh, uh, relevant or useful for search engine algorithms. So there are two things that are driving our use of titles. You know, it's, yeah, it, it should accurately re represent what you are talking about, but it should also be something that search engines would take an index and help improve your visibility. So if it's a li online example, you're doing a live streaming, say live, that means, okay, this is a live stream of your, church service or online church service. These things are useful, right? Uh, use relevant hashtags or whatever content you're releasing because that is that helps in making your content visible. And we'll talk about this more uh, in our, when we talk about social media platforms and how to use these hashtags. Uh, for videos, you know, take a little time to write a description. That helps in, uh, for search engines and uh, 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 write the text that's, of course, optimized for search engines. And wherever possible, you can provide links to relevant resources, of course. Um, you want to also improve the uh, search engine optimization for images, good quality images, use relevant file names uh, for your images. So you could label your image. I mean, your file name could be like this. And that's better than just saying image one and image two. You know, image one, image two doesn't convey meaning. This one is actually conveying some meaning in the name. And that's useful. And use uh, relevant image titles and keywords for those. Use alt tags for your images. That means if in case the image doesn't load, there's a text that is displayed in its place uh, that's relevant. Uh, and of course, use the right file types for your images. 
typically use PNG, SVG, those types. And if possible, try and host your images on your own site so that that also helps in the whole search engine optimization. Right? And let them be visible in your sitemap as well, these images. Um, similarly for videos. Right? So what can we do? Use a thumbnail image that's engaging. Use a video transcript and uh, pay attention to your title and description. Those are the things that will help in search engines. Um, and uh, the rest of your page, uh, the content where this video is being shown, if the content on the rest of the page is relevant to your video, right? It shouldn't be like two different things. They should be relevant. That also helps, right? Uh, so, and don't put the same video in multiple places, then it reduces your ranking because Google is saying that, hey, you're putting this up in so many different places. Um, so that's that one video, you're showing it in many places. And uh, like example, your website, uh, maybe your church website, and then it's, it's hosted on YouTube or so, that's okay. But if it's the same thing being shown, uh, that it could impact your ranking. So think about that when you're distributing your videos. Just a little bit of understanding here. You know, when people are searching for video content, how is going to, how is Google or YouTube going to decide uh, how to show your video? Right. So it's going to index your video using a lot of information. Your video content, of course, what's in the video. Uh, it's going to look at your thumbnail. It's going to look at the audio, your title, your description. And it's going to use all of these things to rank your video. Yeah, And in addition to that, we're also looking at, so when a user, that means not you, so you're the producer of the video, and you've done your part in the content, the thumbnail, the audio title, so on. That's your part, what you, you have control over. But when a user is on YouTube, for instance, YouTube is going to look at that user's past behavior. What did that, that user watch? What did that user click on, etc. And it's also going to look at their satisfaction, their you know, what did they like, what do they dislike, what do they dismiss, etc. right? So it's keeping that information, right? And then, so here's the corpus of all the videos available, which are in millions, maybe billions. And here's a user who's, who's you know, scrolling through YouTube or something else, some other, any platform. We're just talking in general terms. It could be, YouTube or some other video platform. So you've got huge number of videos. How is that platform going to present your video? Right? So there is, it's going to pull out, it's going to filter out, okay, these are the videos that are best suited for this person, this individual, right? Based uh, and then it's going to look at the information it already has about this person in its store, in its own history and context. It's also going to look at this person's behavior, online behavior, from other sources. So uh, other platforms are also tracking this user's behavior, and that in some of that information may be shared. So. This search, this algorithm that's running on this particular platform is going to use the user's history and context that it has stored on that platform plus other sources. And then out of the millions of videos, it will filter out down to hundreds. Then based on this information, it will then rank. Uh, and then this is where you, what you have done comes into play, right? So this is what you have done. You have created a video, you've given it a title, you've given it a description, you've given it a, uh, a image, cover image, you've, uh, you know, relevant text, whatever. You're, those are the features of the video you've published. And then based, it's going to then present the video to the user. 
Okay, so what you do in terms of the content, the thumbnail, the text, the title, the description, all these little details have an effect, have an influence on whether or not the video you've submitted is going to be shown to the user, right? So putting an effort here to the video features is worth it. And if, you, if we do it intelligently, it will be presented to you know to use to to people to view right so put some effort into this so that eventually you know uh, you want the videos to be visible of course and or the content that you produce you want it to be visible so that people can uh, you know make use of them so uh, do your keyword search research what are the keywords that you should be using include keywords in your video file name title description script. Uh, use a custom thumbnail where that can also add to the video features. Uh, use compelling keywords, rich titles, and uh, good video tags. So basically, these are things that you could do to enhance the visibility of your video. Right? Uh, you can cross-check YouTube and search results, see how that video is doing, uh, see uh, you know, of course, if there are more people who engage with the video, that will improve its ranking as well. You can't force it, but generally, if people like or subscribe, that improves the visibility of what you're doing. Um, you can create YouTube shorts of that video, share it, and then point back to the main video, uh, and so on. Okay. So think about this. I've, I've put in a lot of points here uh, that can help us improve the visibility of the content that you are releasing. Last thought, uh, as far as releasing videos and graphics, especially when you're releasing videos that carry songs and music from other artists, it's very important to men give credits. Other otherwise, your video will be blocked, especially in those parts of the world where copyright is important. right? So if you're using a song, so typically in our Sunday service, uh, we are singing songs that have been written by different uh, artists and bands. Uh, and if we don't properly acknowledge them, then that YouTube video will be blocked in certain parts of the world, right? Because it is violating copyright uh, in those regions. So it's always good to provide in, in the description, you give the credits, write credits for the songs that are being sung. So here's an example, what we do you know, for all our Sunday service live stream. We give credits to all the songs that have been sung in the worship. And um, um, then, then your video will not be blocked, uh, either by YouTube or even on Facebook. Facebook would block as well. So if you give, give the right credits, then uh, it is released. And, it's made visible. Okay. So I, I know there was a lot of information, uh, but any questions? So even if you know, even if you um, yourself are not directly involved. You know, you can take this PDF that I've shared and pass it on to your uh, graphics team and say, guys, hey, just read through this and see what, you know, we can use for our church and for our ministry, right? So that these standards and guidelines can be used. Of course, you can customize it. You can tailor it to your particular church or particular ministry. But if you follow these kind these things in the these guidelines, you will have good quality. You will have consistency. You'll make sure that you don't make mistakes in the graphics in the video. And also, it'll give you good visibility uh, of the content that you're producing. All right, so next week, uh, not next week, tomorrow, we'll go to our next lesson, which will be on social media. Again, I'll just share some thoughts on how we can uh, use social media effectively and meaningfully for church and ministry. Okay. If there are no questions, no thoughts, we will close in prayer. Let me see any questions. No. 
All right, let's close in prayer. Uh, somebody could pray, and um, we'll close. Could somebody pray? Uh, I'll pray, Pastor. Go ahead, Prabhakar. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we acknowledge your holy name. Father, we bow down in front of you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity, wonderful learning experience, Father. So we have been learning about these tools and tech uh, technologies, Father. Thank you so much uh, for equipping us with all these wonderful insights. Uh, I thank you for the life of Pastor Ashish, Father, for his uh, glorious insights which we, he has been sharing with all of us thank father i dedicate all of us so that we can be equipped as a glorious leaders in the coming future to enhance the kingdom of god in in this world and act according to your will father thank you so much for leading us throughout this uh class and right class glory and honor to your holy name we ask this prayer in the name of our lord jesus christ amen amen thank you amen Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being in the class. Enjoy the rest of your day. We will meet again tomorrow. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you.